Okay, let's walk through uh, just a demonstration of how to build a uh, first principles model for the Arduino lab. What we're going to do is just come to the, uh, just go to apmonitor.com and then uh, select the process control course. We're uh, going to be visiting the physical Arduino lab. Now this is a uh, temperature control lab uh, that allows us to control the temperature of this thermistor by changing the voltage to the trans resistor, okay, and uh, they're coupled with a silver epoxy um, between them. And, and we've shown, you know, stability analysis, root locus stability analysis, um, and we're going to be covering a fundamental model derivation now. Okay, so let's, um, let's just go ahead and open up a, a new sheet here. And what we're going to do is, is just um, talk about our, our model. Okay, so we have a transistor, and we're just going to name this M. We have uh, some silver epoxy, I'll name that S, and then we have our thermistor um, as well. And so we have um, you know, the power, we can adjust the voltage coming into the transistor, and then we're measuring uh, the temperature uh, coming out of the, uh, the um, thermistor. Okay, so in the thermistor. Um, so one way to do this is just to uh, write our energy balance around the whole thing. Okay, in, in that case, I have a mass times C sub P dt dt, okay, equals, and then I have um, maybe a, a heat transfer coefficient, so we have energy loss just due to uh, convection, and uh, that's going to be ambient temperature minus the temperature of the device, and then we also may have, um, let's say, th uh, radiation uh, terms, now thermal radiation, um, Again, that's just going to be T ambient to the fourth minus the temperature of our device to the fourth. Um, and then we have our, our generation term um, for the energy, and that's going to be uh, V times I. Okay, so that's going to be the power uh, that's going to be dissipated across the, uh, the transistor. Um, okay, so, so this is our, um, okay, one model of this. And... Uh, you know, we can we could also split this up into three if we wanted to. If we wanted to, um, let's say, model the temperature of each one individually, we would write an energy balance um, around each of them. And uh, so, so let's let's try that as well. Let's just um, you know, we we could have either one. We could do a lumped one, or we could do each individually. Um, let's just go ahead and try. Um, to do each one individually, and so we need an energy balance around each one. Okay, so I'm going to do M C C P, and I'll just do T. Um, I'll do one, two, and three. Okay, and uh, you know, what what we would need, um, you know, is, is basically the same thing as as before. You could include radiation or not include radiation. I'm just going to leave uh, radiation out of this one, just because. Um, you know, it's only really only applicable at very high temperatures, and so it'll probably be insignificant for the temperatures that we're going to be using for this lab. Okay, so I'm going to do MCCP DT1. Okay, and then we have H A T ambient minus T. Okay, T1, um, and then uh, we might have a, a conduction term into our second um, one. So I need a cross-sectional area times a, a thermal conductivity and then I have a delta X and that would be T1 minus T2. Okay, so this is the energy that's lost uh, that's transferred to the uh, the second uh, the second control area and then we also have our V times I. Okay, so that would be the first one and that would model the dynamics of just that first piece. Okay, and then we could write um, let me change this to a 1 as well, the mass of 1, mass of 2, C sub P, DT2, DT equals, um, again, this is temperature ambient minus temperature 2, and then I'm going to have, uh, you know, the thermal conduction coming from the first one, okay, so that's just going to be a positive sign there, the energy coming from the first one, and then we're also going to be losing some to the third one. Okay, and that's T2 minus T3. 
Okay, and then the third one um, follows as well. Very similar to the first one, except with no, um, n you know, none of the uh, the, the um, generation term there. Okay, and uh, and plus this thermal conductivity term from the second device. Okay, so we have our our three equations. Um, now this would be modeling each one individually. Okay, so what, when would you use um, you know, the three equations versus one equation? Now if the thermal conductivity is very fast and those temperatures are almost always equal, then you could probably get away with, with one. But if those are very different temperatures, um, then you may need to use uh, three. Okay, so um, let's just go in and I'll show you some of the files. I just want to show how to run some of these. Um, uh, we have some files built in in MATLAB, and uh, we'll go ahead and download um, these temperature control lab files here, um, and just save those to your desktop. And uh, the first thing you'll need to do is extract them. Okay, so extract them, and uh, you know as we update this lab, these things might be you know slightly different, but we're just going to go to this first principles one, and here's our one state model. Um, and uh, and then we also have a three state model okay and uh, in the one state model we'll have um, you know an AP monitor MATLAB AP monitor okay and if you open that up you'll see the one state model um, with our one equation here okay and that um, the dollar sign just means differential of temperature with respect to time and uh, some of the parameters, you can change some of these parameters. Let's say uh, you want to adjust the heat transfer coefficient or the mass um, or the area. Um, you can do that right here. Okay, and, um, and then to run that, um, you just open up this main one sim.m file. And, uh, and so with your parameters that you just entered into that APM file, then, uh, then you can run this and that will then show the predicted uh, and measured values. Okay, and, and one that, let's just make sure I'm running here. Okay, so it's, it's running, and then when it finishes, it'll pop up with a, a plot that will show the predicted uh, versus the uh, measured values. Okay, so the red is the model, and the blue is the uh, measured value. Okay, so there's, there's a little bit of difference there. Um, so there's another script here as well, um, and this one is the Bain 2 opt. Um, and, and what you want to do before you, you run these is um, just replace this PID output.csv file with the one that you got from, um, so I'm going to go back here. When you ran the data, you, in the collected data folder, you should have PID under bar output with a timestamp on it. Just remove that timestamp and copy it into any of these. Um, you know, there's the uh, the file PID output CSV. If I open it up, you'll see it's just a comma separated value uh, file that you can open up in Excel or Notepad. Okay, um, and so we want to optimize this now. Okay, just uh, you know some of these uh, parameters in our model that were unknown. And we want to adjust those so we best fit uh, to the data. Um, okay, so here's the uh, code and uh, you know if I just run it here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it and that will send it off and solve it and then we'll see the updated uh, predictions that are optimized with the optimized uh, model values okay so you can see it fits um, you know, just a little bit better okay we also want to try this uh, maybe with the, the three state model as well and so we would go into uh, let's just go ahead and close this out. Again, you'd need to copy in your PID output. Okay, so just copy that that over. Let's go over to three states, um, and then just copy in your PID output right there. Okay, now this is our uh, three state model. It's just a little bit more complicated, but you just have these uh, three equations that describe the dynamics not only of that one temperature, but of the three individual components within your lab. Okay, and so let's just go to, I'll just go to the optimized one. Now this one may be just a little bit more accurate if we can't, um, 
you know, if those three temperatures aren't the same um, or significantly different. So let's just run this and see how that assumption holds. Um, you know, just copy in your PID underbar output.csv file and then you can run this and it'll take that file and then use that to generate uh, these results. Okay, so um, once it finishes, we'll pop up with um, the plot. Okay, so let me just make sure that's running. Okay, there it is. And uh, there is the result. Okay, so um, maybe just a little bit more accurate, but you can see that the transistor, the silver epoxy, and the thermistor, they're about the same temperature. So a first order model may, uh, you know, one state model may be sufficient for this case. Okay, and then uh, I'm also going to show you, if you come back to the MATLAB uh, script, you'll also see the new parameter values that are printed out at the end of, of running that. Okay, uh, there's one other thing I just wanted to show briefly, um, and that is, um, you know, I asked you to also compare the uh, linear model, uh, you know, linearize the model, and then um, also compare it to your FOPDT model. Okay, so um, you'll need to input your FOPDT model here, um, just for the comparison. And then this is uh, some code that converts our three-state model into uh, what's called state space form. Okay, so this, um, it uh, just linearizes the model. Okay, so this equation right here, I've linearized it with respect to T1, T2, T3, and the voltage and then the same with our other equations t1 t2 t3 and the voltage and then i'm going to put this into a state space model form uh, convert it to a transfer function form and then uh, plot uh, these different um, values okay so i'm just going to change um, folder here and uh, let this run okay so i can see um, there is my first principles model and there's my empirical model. Now these are just made up numbers, uh, but you can use this script if you want to update your parameters. Um, just update them here. Let's say you had a different heat transfer coefficient or thermal conductivity. You can update those here and then just run the script and this will produce the comparison between the FOPDT model that you generate from empirical um, results and uh, the first principles. Okay, so um, so what we've done, just in summary, we um, derived um, uh, just a one-state model and also a three-state model, and then we've simulated those in MATLAB and then compared the uh, linearized version of our three-state model to our empirical FOPDT model.